What is going on everyone, it's Justin here, and today we're taking a look at iOS 14 and some of the new features that they announced at WWDC, including some of my favorites and things that we've been waiting many years for that have finally made its way to an iPhone. If you guys haven't listened to my podcast already about business and tech, I'm gonna drop a link down below and please leave a review if you're over on Apple and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, but let's just go ahead and get started with the first feature. So the first and I think biggest thing is one that we've been waiting for many years now. Android has had it for quite a while and we've finally got it on an iPhone and that is widgets. And I feel like the approach that Apple did was actually one that I think was a very good one. Not only do you have like widgets in general, but the way you choose different ones and the expanded capabilities that are gonna come as more apps start to adapt to that is all very good news. So there's actually a few ways to add your widgets. You can go ahead to your kind of menu and just drag it over to your home screen. The other option is also just to hold down on the main screen and on the top left corner, there is a plus button. And from there, it shows all of your widgets from different apps. And right now it is just the Apple ones, but you can go ahead and search them. And by the time the full version is out, I imagine that many of the main apps on the App Store that you probably use on an everyday basis are gonna have widgets as well. So just as an example as to how you customize your main home screen is just holding it down, placing it on where you need it. And if you want to, you can have it as a smart stack. You can also select like different podcasts. And I also really like the fact that if you go ahead and select a certain app, say the calendar or maps, you do have different options for sizes just right here as you would on Android. I can have it just show a square that takes up a small corner of my screen, but I could also have it take up an entire half of the screen and that will show like the meetings and everything. Uh, and if I wanna go to an app such as notes, you can either set it to specifically show one note that you access every single day. And in my case, my to-do list is actually in notes or I could also have it show all the folders, a set of notes or pretty much all the ones that I could find. And as you can see, I've got like 600 notes, so it does get messy a lot of the times, and there's definitely some that I use more than others. So having the folder function is very nice. The Today View is also improved and allows you to have the same widget format that you would have on your home screen. And a lot of times your home screen can get very cluttered, so another new feature is being able to hide a select home screen. So just go ahead and hold down your screen and you'll see all these dots on the bottom. Just tap that and you can hide a certain menu. So say we want to hide that page and uh, now as you can see, we don't see it. If we want to enable it again, you just need to click on a certain button. And just like that, it is just all very intuitive and seems to make a lot of sense. The improvements have not only been made to the far left of your home screen and the home screen itself with its widgets, but there's also something new called App Library. It is actually found on the far right after you've scrolled through all of your app pages. I personally never use grids on my home screen because I think they're kind of ugly, but here they have them all sorted into different categories, the series suggestions, and also alphabetical search at the top. The next feature is one that we've waited a long time for and it has finally made its way over to the iPhone. And if you have like the 11 Pro Max, you have a lot of screen real estate. So this feature takes advantage of all of it. It is picture in picture. And if you're playing a video, you can just tap the picture in picture button. And from there, you can go ahead and do your thing. And whether you're listening to like a podcast or something, if you don't wanna have the window take up any space on your screen, it will continue to play the audio. But I just like to be able to essentially watch a video in a smaller form factor while I'm trying to go through like notes and like just typing some stuff up and some productivity stuff. It is just very easy to shift around anywhere you need it to and resize it however. So that is a great feature that we finally have on the iPhone. And I feel like a lot of the features that they kind of added to iOS 14 are just to give you more of a continuous and seamless experience that just makes sense. Another thing that I also really like that they also brought over to the iPad is the fact that now phone calls don't have to take up your entire screen. I personally don't like taking phone calls that often, but unless it's for like work and stuff, it is nice that it now just shows up on the top instead of having to take up the entire display. So as you can see, the phone call shows up on the top and I can choose to either accept or decline or have it show up on the whole screen. So I feel like that as well as picture in picture is just a good way to have a less intrusive experience if you're trying to do something else on your phone. Another area that Apple has also applied that to is with Siri. So now if I say, hey Siri, it's not gonna show up an entire menu, but instead it's just going to pop up on the bottom here. So let's just test this. Hey Siri. Translate. French, Italian, Japanese, Brazilian Portuguese, Russian, or Mandarin Chinese. I'm really hungry. Go find a restaurant. 
In Italian, I'm really hungry go find a restaurant is. Ho davvero fame vai a cercare un ristorante. Hey Siri, can you send an audio message to Trevor Good? Okay, recording. This is just a test of Siri dictation. Great. Send it to Trevor Good. Some of the other changes though are in iMessage and the way it's sorted, the customization features, and also especially in group messages. So, so the first example is in the individual messages. So for example, if you want to pin somebody to the top, you might talk to them a lot. Just go ahead and tap that and their icon will now show on the top. Just go ahead and tap on that. You can message them anytime. Very easy, sort of like favorites in the call menu. The other feature though, I think comes in the group chat and this is where I saw the biggest improvement. Everyone's got that friend who is usually talking to one person in the group chat, but everybody has to get the notifications for it. So that issue is now fixed. You can now kind of refer to one person in the group chat. So for example, Trevor and Sebastian are in this chat. Um, and uh, all we have to do is type in at Trevor and it will, uh, it will kind of know who I'm talking to and uh, that person will get the notification. And in order to reply to an individual message, instead of just replying to the entire group, just tap on the message and uh, hit reply on that. And you can type in, as you can see right here, it does draw a line to the direct message that you're replying to. Some of the other interface improvements include in just like the way it's grouped, you can change the name and photo. And the interface saw some minor improvements, but nothing like too crazy. But overall, some of the functionality changes are nice to see. Another area that they've kind of added to that I personally never use is Memoji. You now have 20 more type of hairstyles and hats. You also have face masks. And uh, yeah, that's just like more ways to express yourself. But personally, like I said, I have never used it before. Another area that I feel like they've cleaned up quite nicely is in the Apple Notes. So as you can see now, the pinned menu is no longer just like a giant list. Instead, it is split up into two different categories and you can expand them or hide them. And on the top right corner, you have just some of the display options such as the gallery view or just as a list. And you also have the option to select certain notes, sorting and all that kind of basic stuff, but they've just done a good job in cleaning it up. And as someone who has, like I said, 600 notes, this is definitely a really nice change to see. I think another cool thing that Apple talked about is the future with car technology. So whether that is CarPlay or using your phone as a key, CarPlay now has the option to show like EV charging routes in conjunction with Apple Maps. But I feel like digital car keys is definitely gonna be the future. And if you own a Tesla, you might have a glimpse of that already. But the first car that is going to have the ability to use your phone as a key is the BMW 5 Series for 2021. And the way it uses that is through NFC and also the U1 chip, which has spatial information that will allow you to have your phone in your backpack and still approach your car and unlock it. What is also really cool in the way they demonstrated it was that you can share a key with someone else. So say your friend might get to your car first and they wanna just get in or they might be driving it. You can give them either full or limited access and all you have to do is just share it with them like you would a Wi-Fi password in iOS, just like a very seamless experience. And I feel like that is gonna be the future because if you're someone like me, you always lose your keys around the house and you just have to get somewhere. So having payments and like your credit cards, your keys and everything that you need to leave the house on your phone or on your watch is just good to see. If you're letting your kids drive your car, you can also have restricted profiles when it comes to giving them access to your vehicle. Apple has also introduced translation functions and you can use it in conversation mode on device only with languages saved, or you can also use it just to kind of, if you're in a foreign city, just have a sign that shows something in a certain language that is very easy to notice. The conversation mode is effective in the fact that if you're talking to somebody in a foreign language, it will translate live and the translation functions are going to be used in Siri as well as Safari. What time is it? I'm trying to find a train station. nearby. ¿Qué hay ahí para comer cerca? Can you tell me where the nearest restaurant is? ¿Me puedes decir dónde está el restaurante más cercano? What time is it in Vancouver? ¿Qué hora es en Vancouver? What's the weather going to be like tomorrow? Is it going to be cold?
On the app store side of things, they've also made improvements in terms of speed and also smart suggestions as to apps based on what you're looking for, what you're using, scanning QR codes, and they've also introduced something called App Clips. These pop-up apps let you do things like unlock parking, pay for coffee without needing to download the full apps. And these are all discovered through scanning of the codes, NFC tabs, uh, QR codes, and shared in messages or Safari links. Some of the examples that they demonstrated were like a scooter app. You might see those in America all the time where you can rent the scooter like a bird, for example. And often you have to like download the whole app, set up the whole process, uh, add your payment and everything. So with something like App Clips, it will just give you what you need and you can use Apple Pay to process the payment and just get started right away. Another really good feature that is not limited to just iOS, I believe, is with the AirPods. And AirPods have become one of the most popular wireless earbuds, or even earbuds in general, that people have been buying in the past couple years. And with the AirPods Pro kind of expanding the capabilities with the accelerometers and everything, there are now a few new features that are involved that I personally really enjoy, and some of which include being able to seamlessly switch between your iPad, your phones, or your computer without having to go to the Bluetooth menu and click on the option to connect to a certain an AirPod. So say I'm like just listening to music on my iPhone, but I go over to my iPad and open up a video. It will start to play the audio from that video. And with like an Apple ecosystem experience, when it comes to devices, the software, and also the earbuds and everything, it just kind of ties it together in another way. Some of the other features in the default app is with Apple Maps. So now there are guides, people can make some live suggestions. You also have EV routing where it shows you where the charging stations are and that is a very handy function that I could have had in the Porsche Taycan video. It also gives you like congestion and green zones and for cycling it will also give you a route for that. And if you want to avoid stuff like stairs you can also select that in your routing methods. I would almost say it is just much more caught up and with like the visual interface and integration with Siri and everything, it will hopefully encourage Apple users to use that instead of something like Google Maps, which is obviously very far ahead in terms of algorithms. On the Find My side of things, we are expecting Apple to release their own kind of tracking system, hopefully sometime soon, but they have also unlocked it to work with third parties and track everything within the app. So instead of just using it for like devices and people, you can use it for your keys as well as your wallet and any other tracker that integrates a platform that is supported. They have also introduced something called Spatial Audio, which uses Dolby Atmos 5.1 and 7.1. And this gives you like a very immersive experience with supported content. And it also uses the accelerometers on your AirPod. And whether you move your head or move your device, it will adapt to that to give you a continual immersive experience. That is definitely something that I'm gonna have to test out to see whether it is really good or not. But I feel like where AirPods are going, and even with just the continuity feature, these are some good improvements in the new generation of software. I think overall, the main features that I've added to iOS 14 are ones that we've been waiting for for quite a while. There hasn't really been any like big surprises, but I feel like they've kind of went back and as they've done with hardware in the past couple years, improved every single thing that people have been wanting for many years now. We've wanted widgets, we've wanted translation functions, we've wanted a better Siri experience, better messaging experience, more of a seamless format between other devices, even though the ecosystem was already there. And I feel like visually, even though the improvements are minor, it definitely looks quite good. And the widgets approach has been one that I've enjoyed in the short period of time that I've had a chance to use it. Even though my car doesn't make the cutoff for the key function on iOS 14, I still think it is a great feature and I'm excited to see how many cars end up supporting that. Otherwise, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like. And this is kind of my overview of iOS 14, but I'd love to hear what your favorite feature is down below. And I'll see you all in the next video.